It's been one year since we left California and moved here to the Philippines. If you're planning on doing the same thing, you're gonna wanna watch this episode. Hello, Familia. Welcome back to LLVT. Out here in beautiful BGC today. Hair is out of control. And I've learned at stoplights, we stand in the shade. Huh? Yeah. Ooh, this camera's heavy. Mommy hasn't been to the gym in a while. Wow, it's so quiet out here today, which is really surprising to me because it's Father's Day. Um, it's a Sunday, Sunday family day, and it's usually like really super busy out here, and it is eerily quiet. It's odd. All right, so this video is not meant to be a comparison of things that might be better or worse in your eyes or my eyes, I guess. Rather, it's more of an informational video, mostly for people like me who are from California and might be considering a move here to the Philippines. Even though we did a lot of research before we moved here, I think there were still a lot of questions that we actually didn't even know to ask. Uh, a lot of things came up that we weren't aware of because we didn't even know to ask about them. Before we get into highlighting some of these differences, let's first talk about some of the things that are similar to perhaps living in the United States, specifically in California. One of the first similarities you'll see, especially living in a city like BGC, is the abundance of restaurants. So there are a lot of restaurants here in BGC that are American brand restaurants that are very similar to the ones in the US. Well, since today's Father's Day, we decided to come out to Nikkei Nama Bar and grab some sushi. Although everyone may not want to go to the same places as they did in the U.S., some people do prefer to have a little bit of that nostalgia. So places like that exist here, especially in BGC, for somebody who wants a little taste of home. What are you eating? Flies and chicken. There is also no shortage of malls. Here in BGC are actually some of the same stores that you would shop at in the U.S. A lot of the things here are still the same. I mean, even here at the One Bonifacio Mall, they actually have an Ashley Furniture Home Store. I think the only caveat to that is prices are very different than what you might expect in the U.S. You know what that looks like to me? that looks like Knott's Berry Farm. So just like in the US, when I used to use Instacart to have our groceries delivered, here in the Philippines, I have a number of actually, a number of different apps that I can use to get our groceries delivered. So it's really convenient, super simple. I can basically start a grocery order anytime, anywhere. All right, so we just got a grocery order delivered and they put it in a box for us, so we don't even have to put it in the bag that we brought. See, we had laundry delivered too. Similar to Uber and Lyft, Philippines has something called Grab. So with Grab, you can actually use an app to call a ride on your phone. Um, you can also get deliveries, like DoorDash. There are definitely differences. Um, there are things that I never knew to think about or even ask about. Back in California, most homes come standard with a garbage disposal. That's like a normal thing. And here in the Philippines, we have something that's called a grease trap. And making sure that we got our grease trap cleaned on a regular basis every three months or so in order to avoid having like a smelly, yucky space underneath our sink. What are you getting? Corn with cheese. Oh, where are you and dad matching? Powdered cheese? This is weird. At first it tastes sweet and then there's like a salty explosion. That's really good. So good. Hang on. Hey, you took two bites. Don't I always tell you not to shovel your food in your mouth? Is it good, Case? Mm-hmm. I just saw a in vanilla. These are the things you gotta do when you're out vlogging in this heat. Speaking of heat, air conditioner. Most people in 
the states who have central air conditioning. Um, we have a window type AC unit, I think is what they call it. We have to have like a contractor come out and then they actually pressure wash like the inside of the AC unit I must do here in the Philippines. So didn't I fungi? One t-shirt and one pair of shorts that we just got for the boys at Zara, 1,800 pesos. Roughly about 35, 36 dollars with today's exchange rate, which to me is a lot of money to spend on a t-shirt and shorts for a kid. Wi-Fi speeds here are actually building dependent. And by that, I mean, depending on which building you live in, they may or may not have certain Wi-Fi services actually available. Oh, I'm so sweaty, it's hot. I realize this is probably why we haven't been outside walking out on High Street in so long, because it's hot. Uh, and it's also been kind of rainy. The weather's been a little unpredictable lately. As far as why Wi-Fi speeds go and the building dependency situation. The example I can share with you there is that for our building, when we came in and we went to go sign up for Wi-Fi, we walked down to the Globe office and they told us there were actually no more spots available in our tower in order for them to facilitate Wi-Fi for us. So I keep getting mixed information from every salesperson that I talk to. So it's really frustrating for me because I don't know who to believe or what exactly to do. That became a whole journey, a whole process to figure out which Wi-Fi we could get, which one could get set up the soonest, the fastest, um, so that we could start uploading some videos for you. So be very thoughtful. I think that would be one of the very first questions I would ask if I'm looking for a place here in BGC. What Wi-Fi capabilities does your building have? Public transportation, such as jeepneys, tricycles, motorcycles, what else is there, Rowan? Oh, taxis, yes. Can also be found all over the country. And a lot of bikes. The Philippines is also a very cash-heavy society. So make sure that you're bringing new crisp and clean bills if you're planning to exchange money here because most of the exchange places won't accept damaged or soiled bills. Gcash is the main form of electronic currency that you can use here in the Philippines. It's very similar to something like Venmo or Cash App. And you can load your Gcash through bank transfer as long as it's a Philippines bank within the app um, or you can load it up with cash at one of their many, many kiosks you can find throughout the country. Unlike in the U.S. where you pay fixed monthly price for your cell phone plan, there are way too many options here in the Philippines. And these plans are priced depending on your minutes and your data usage. It's kind of crazy. It feels like you're back in 1999 again. Although monthly cell phone plans do exist, here they're actually called postpaid. It seems to me that the most popular option for people is the prepaid. On top of that, SMS messaging actually doesn't allow for picture messages or video messages to be sent. And believe it or not, voicemail is not a thing here either. It literally doesn't even exist. You got, oh, you got Greek yogurt in there, that's why. Yes, it is real milk. Um, and lastly, one of the most important things, at least in my eyes, if you are bringing your own cell phone from the US, make sure that it's jailbroken. You can also find many ways to pay your bills here. In fact, bill pay centers are pretty much everywhere. I've even seen them in grocery stores and the banks. Now most people do pay their bills in person and of course in cash. The bill pay situation, it's one of those like that's just how it is kind of things and so that's how people do it. Uh, but speaking of paying bills, I actually want to talk about banking next. Banks here 
tend to operate a little bit differently than they do in the U.S. And for some reason, that leads to more people actually banking in person here. What is it? That is so cool. You'll often see long lines at the bank, especially on a payday. Now, if you're planning to open a bank account here in the Philippines, that's a whole other thing. Uh, be prepared, because it will definitely take some time. One of the most important things to note is that some banks actually have a vetting process for new customers. So they may require you to have a savings account for a certain period of time um, that carries a certain daily balance in it before you can actually even open a checking account. You're definitely going to need that checking account in order to pay your rent, unless you're paying in cash or by some grace from above, you get the option to actually pay your rent electronically. So you're going to need to provide your landlord or your leasing company with a series of post-dated checks in order to pay your rent. Now what we did when we first got here was we actually paid six months of our rent upfront in cash to show good faith to our landlord. Um, and obviously they were happy to take cash, right? And then we just kind of got the banking thing sort of straightened out as we were um, settling in. Now, the things we listed here today are not an in-depth and fully comprehensive list of what to expect when moving here. Also, the items mentioned here are based fully on our own personal experiences. Others who choose to live in different parts of the Philippines, such as the province, may have a completely different story to share. I hope that you find value in today's episode because we do put a lot of time and effort into these videos. As always, thanks for watching and inga till next time. I'm trying to film with my left hand and I usually do it with my right. <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I don't know if I'm supposed to be going. So one of the first similarities is, especially for a blah. Now, although not everyone wants to go. <laughs> They're so silly. Oh, ooh, I did it. Escalator, camera, all by myself, no help. Yes. This is what happens when you live with one big boy and two small boys. They mess around on the escalator. What are you doing? I don't know. Guys. I think we're finally gonna get footage of the world's tiniest escalator. Look at it, it's so small. And we're actually taking it. Okay. It's a whole 30 seconds escalator. Similar to, ooh, wait a minute. My bracelet's in the way. <laughs> oh, I stepped in a, in a pile of mud. <laughs> okay, let's see, there we go. Nope. Focus on me. All right, there we are. Hi, Bunso. Mm. You hanging out with mommy today? Mm -hmm. Being mommy's vlogging helper? I'm. Assistant? Yes. Assistant I'm to mommy today. I'm cold. 